photography is actually a second career for me. I was originally a research chemist uh, and I got interested in photography sort of as a hobby and realized that there had to be some way to sort of bring science and photography together. I saw it as a way to feed my curiosity about the world around me, about what happens. My research interests are aligned pretty much with the engineering and material sciences fields where it's about photography as a tool to collect some form of data that would be very difficult for us to collect any other way. We may be trying to look at something in a qualitative sense, purely visually, or we may be actually using the camera to let us get some quantitative information because with most of the high-speed cameras now, for example, there's an integrated measurement package so you can calculate things like speeds and accelerations and angles and things like that. But very often the image is actually used um, as a complementary source of data for quantitative data. The setup times for things like this can vary I could probably spend much more time on any of them than I ever have at this point, but typically for an event that's going to be over in just a few thousandths of a second, I will spend at least half a day to a day setting it up because it's all about getting the timing and the synchronization of everything right. When the event is over very quickly, you've got an extremely small window of time to actually capture it and make sure that the lights are on at the right time, the camera's ready, all that stuff is happening properly, and that you've actually got the right stage of the event. I've often told people that high-speed photography is about you know, method, moment, and duration. It's how you look, it's when you look, and it's for how long you look. Because if any of those are wrong, you're gonna see nothing. So for the liquid lace photograph, I probably spent in total about two days working on that one photograph between the setup and, and the fine tuning and the refining to get just the right moment in making that happen. The liquid lace image was created by dropping a drop of a glycerin water mixture into a thin film of alcohol on a, on a flat surface. And what you're seeing there, the lace pattern is formed due to the differences in surface tension of those two liquids. And as they mix, the liquid with the higher surface tension will tend to pull the other liquids away into it and form the holes that then form the lace pattern. The way in which that happens is actually used to ensure good, clean drying of wafers in IC manufacture, uh, where dirt is an, you know, an incredibly big problem. And this Marangoni effect can actually help with making sure that they're dried in a very clean manner. It's also the same thing that causes the tears on the side of a wine glass, if you've ever observed that when you're looking at wine. The value of imagery in any field as a communication tool is that it speaks so quickly to people. You know, if, if I draw on the experience I've had with my research colleagues, I had one of them say, you know, I could sit down and go through pages and pages of data on this, but you showed me five seconds of video and I understood what was happening. And I think that you can really get things across very, very quickly to a very diverse, very, very mixed audience of, of uh, backgrounds, of interests. Um, and I think sometimes the challenge is to actually sort of cross that art science boundary a little bit and try to create something that people want to look at long enough to actually now start to understand it.